Hey guys, Coach Lloyd here. I'm down at Victoria Park Athletics Track and I've teamed up with Prodder at Running and Nike. And today I'm gonna to be running you guys through my top tips on how you can run that elusive sub 20 minute 5K. Now, the first time I ran sub 20 minutes was about 10 years ago in 2011 at my local park run. Fast forward to 2021 and I can run 14 minutes 31. So over those years of coaching and running the 5K, I have learned a thing or two. Now the 5,000 meters on an athletics track like the one behind me and around me is 12 and a half laps. If you work in miles, it's 3.1 miles. And of course, if we're in kilometers, it's five kilometers. Now to run a 19 minute, 59 second 5K, we're gonna be talking of paces around four minutes per kilometer and six minutes, 25 seconds per mile. So when we talk about the 5K, there are so many different areas of training that we could talk about from interval training to mindset to motivation to working out in the gym. But we haven't got all day and I wanna make sure that we cut through all of that and get to the nitty gritty. So if you're like me and you love running, I'm sure one of the terms that you've heard over the years is consistency is key, okay? We see it in magazines, we see it on blogs, we see it on YouTube, and you're definitely gonna see it on a video that, like the one that you're watching right now. But what is consistency and what does it actually mean? Now I agree as a coach and an athlete that consistency, yes, it is key. But only if you're consistently doing the correct things in training consistently over a sustained period of time. So it is important to find your consistency in your training but it's also important to understand that your consistency is unique to you in your training. What works for me and what makes me tick and what makes me work towards my personal bests is gonna be different to you and it's gonna be different to every single runner out there. It's also important to understand that we're not all in the same boat. Some of us have got jobs that we've gotta to go to, families that we've gotta to commit to, so many different variables that affect our training. Now, once you find your process and what works best for you, that is a process you need to stick to over weeks and weeks and months of consistent training. There is no quick fix. There is no shortcut. There is no super powder drink that you're gonna be able to drink straight to a personal best. But if you can stick with that process that you know that works, you will find that you will become a faster, stronger and happier runner over time. One of my favorite quotes that I tell my athletes is that Rome wasn't built in a day and neither will that PB. question I get asked all the time as a coach is how long do I need to train for the 5k? Now there is no real correct answer to that because it's going to be unique to you as a runner. But if you've got a plain slate ready to start training for your race, I'd give yourself 8 to 12 weeks to train for a 5k PB. Now if you can book a race in the future within that time frame, start to work back from that date. And that's where you can start to slot in your key training days, your rest days, any other target races or any other commitments that you wanna put into there. That's gonna give you the power to structure your training accordingly. Now, a really important thing as well is that if you can work back from your target race and you can structure in all these other elements of training, it also gives you the power that if you do have any setbacks, whether you're ill a day or you've got a bit of a niggle or you've got a wedding to go to on the weekend, you've got, you've got the time there to play with. So next piece of advice when we talk about training for the 5K, and you can relate this to most of your running, is keeping your easy days easy and ensuring that your hard days are hard. Now I'm gonna put a bit of a spin on this one because again, this one can be misconstrued. Yes, we want your easy days to be easy, but your hard days, we don't just want hard running. It needs to be specific to the event and the goal that you're training towards. Now, if you can do this, if you can keep your easy days easy and recover in between your harder, more specific days of training, that's gonna start to facilitate that level of consistency that we previously spoke about. Now, if we can create that level of consistency in our training, that's gonna build your confidence week on week on week. A more confident runner is a happier runner, and a happier runner is a faster runner. So I'm gonna give you an example on how you can keep your easy days easy and ensure that your hard days are hard. Now, I've got a great guy here, Steve. He is a great egg. Now, Steve trains five days a week, okay, and he mixes his training up across a few different disciplines. He does two easy runs of about 30 minutes in length. He does a medium bike ride of about an hour. He does an interval session on the track behind me at Victoria Park, and he does a long run of about 80 to 90 minutes. Now, he has two full rest days where he does nothing, 
and then he does one strength training session of about 30 minutes. So he really is, you know, sort of touching on all of those training elements that are really important to train towards the 5K. Now, Steve works full time. He's in the NHS. He's one of our key workers. He does about 65 hours of work a week. So he has to fit in his training in and around his work shifts. Now, his most important training days, as he told me, were his rest days. Now, the rest days are your most important training days and that's when you're going to actually soak up that fitness and get those gains from all of the hard work that you've been putting in the gym, on the bike or on the running track. Now if you can get your mindset into a place where you sort of say to yourself my rest days are my best training days you'll start to appreciate that why rest days are so important. So, next piece of advice that we're gonna run through is interval training. Now, if you've ever read a copy of Runner's World or you've gone on Strava, you've probably seen the elites and the sub-elites and people running well inside 20 minutes for 5K, smashing out massive interval sessions on athletics tracks, on hills, fartleks, tempo runs, threshold runs, you name it, I'm sure you've seen it. Now, when we talk about interval training, what does that actually mean? Now, an interval session basically means running at a pace for a certain amount of time or distance, taking a recovery section, which can be standing still, it can be jogging, it can be even moving faster, and then repeating the process. Now we can do it in time, we can do it in distance. There are so many different types of interval workouts that you can do that is gonna benefit your 5K. Now I'm gonna run through two of my favorite workouts that I do in my own training and my athletes do that absolutely work towards that personal best. So coaching legend Frank Horwill famously said, if you want to improve your 5K, don't go too far away from speed. Now, when we talk about training for the 5K and doing interval training, we don't just want to run at 5K pace. We want to push the tempo. So we want to do some sessions where we're exceeding that 625 per mile pace and four minute per K pace. Now, Seb Co used Frank Horwell's five pace system. Now, I'm sure you've seen that before where you've got your easy state, you've got your steady state, you've even got your interval state as well. And I do recommend that you go and research that five pace system. Now let's run through the first session that you can try at home or on your local athletics track to work towards your 5K PB. So before you go out there and try your first interval session towards your 5K PB, a couple of sort of golden nuggets of advice from me. First thing is you need to find somewhere to do it. So whether that's your local athletics track or a safe park that you can run in that's well lit and flat, you need somewhere that you can run at race pace and faster rather than running up and down a mountain. If you do want to go and attend your local athletics club and go down to one of your local track nights, head over to England Athletics website. That's where you can find a, a club near you. So before you try your interval training sessions, one question that I get asked as a coach all the time is, what kit should I be wearing? Should I be wearing these shoes? Should I be wearing these shorts? In a world full of carbon fiber plates and super shoes, my advice is to find something that you're most comfortable in. Now, if you're not sure on what to wear, head over to ProDirect Running website and you will be able to filter it to lightweight and racing kit. And that's gonna enable you to hit those splits that you need to work towards that 5K. Now, the first workout I'm gonna run through with you, we have a track version and we have an off-track version, depending on what access to facilities you have in your local area. Now the track version, we're gonna need an athletics track of 400 meters. Now that could be on the grass, synthetic or cinder track, but we need a 400 meter athletics track for this one. Now the session is 12 times 400 meters. That's 12 times one lap. And we are gonna take a two minute rest period in between. Now the rest period could be a walk or a jog. Just make sure that you keep moving so you stay warm and stay loose. Now in terms of what effort and pace to run these intervals of 400 meters at, we're looking for about 3K pace. Now on an effort scale, that's about eight out of 10. But if you're not sure what your 3K pace is or what your 3K effort is, best way to find out is by doing. So give it a crack and see how you go. Now, if you don't have an athletics track local to you, jump off the track and get on a road loop or a loop on the grass, somewhere that's flat, safe, and able for you to run fast. And the workout is 12 times 90 seconds, again, with a two minute 
rest period. Now this session's great for a couple of reasons. The main reason is because we're gonna be running the same distance each interval or the same time each interval. So if you do this workout today, you can come back to it in four weeks time and compare your effort and see if you're improving. Now the next session that we're gonna be running through is a session that I first did when I lived in Australia and it's named after Australian marathon legend, Rob De Costello. It's called Deke's Quarters. Now De Costello, he won the 1983 Marathon World Championships and if it's good enough for him, it's definitely good enough for us guys at home. Now the session is ideally done on an athletics track if you have access to it. But if you don't, you can do it on the roads or on the grass. Just make sure that your watch GPS is set up into distance so you can track each lap that you're doing by the distance. Now the workout is as follows. It's three miles in length and it's eight times 400 meters with a 200 meter float recovery. Now, what is a float recovery? It's a bit of a strange word that you may not have heard before, but it basically means anything faster than a jog. So we want your 400 meter intervals to be run at your 3K pace or your 3K effort, similar to the first workout that we spoke about. And then your 200 meter float recovery, we need it faster than your easy running pace. So in and around your steady run effort would be perfect. Now your finish time for the full three miles is gonna be a great indicator for what your 5K race shape is. Now I generally do this workout about four weeks before any target race for the 5K. And as I say, it's gonna give you a great indication of what shape you're in for the 5K. So you train like an absolute beast for eight, 10, maybe even 12 weeks. You feel great on the morning of the race and you're raring to go. Now, the stars don't align and you don't run sub 20. That is a reality of what could happen on the day. But does that mean that your dream of running a 19 minute 5K is over? Absolutely not. Let's put a few things into perspective. When we race, we put our bodies through an immense amount of physical stress. We've also got to understand the stress that our brains go through when we race as well. Now, that benefit that we get from that is huge. We're never gonna be able to replicate what we can do in a race in training, but we do need to recover from that process. Now, good coaches will advise you not to race every single week because of how demanding a race is. Now, ask yourself after a race, what did, what, what did I learn from that? Did I make any mistakes in the race? Can I implement those lessons that I've learned from to my training or my next race? What can I do to be better next time out for the 5K? My final piece of advice is if you do miss your target first time out, is to try again and again and again. I can't tell you how many bad races I've had in my career. Most of them don't go well, but the ones that do go well are the ones that you will remember the most. So rebook another race, reassess and have another crack. So another area of running that I love, and when we talk about the 5K specifically, is learning to love the 5K is really important. If you speak to any runner out there that's done a park run or a local track 5K, they will say how grueling the event is. Let's not sugarcoat it, it's a tough race. Whether you're doing 12 and a half laps around a track or a loop around the Victoria Park park run, it's gonna be difficult. But learning to love the 5K is one thing, well, how about learning to love it with others? Now, I think that the social benefit of running is massively important. It can be great for your mental health, it can be great for your confidence, and I, I talked about it earlier, being a happier runner is gonna help you become a faster runner. Now, my advice in learning to love running and the 5K with others can include going down to your local park run on a Saturday and meeting up maybe with some colleagues from work, you know, enticing them to start their running journey. Or you could head over to the England Athletics website and find your local athletics club that you could go down on a Tuesday or a Thursday night. Maybe there's a local crew or community running club near you that you could tag along on the weekend long run. There are so many different ways that you can find your social potential within your running. And if you can share the demand of training for the 5K with others in those tough interval sessions, all those tough long runs in the cold months through the winter, it's gonna make your training a little bit more manageable and ultimately help you along that pathway to your new 5K PB. Eliud Kipchoge, Marathon King, famously said that 100% of me is nothing compared to 10% of the whole team, and that's teamwork. So share the load, find your love for running and the 5K with others, and trust me, you will not regret it. 
So I hope you've enjoyed all of the tips and all of the advice that we've run through today on how you can train towards your sub 20 minute 5K. Now be sure to head over to the YouTube channel with ProDirect where we're also gonna be running through how you can run a sub 90 minute half marathon. Now do make sure you do subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any uploads from ProDirect for your future running content.